Hey everyone, it's TK Friday and you're watching The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today I'm doing a full edit. I'm calling this one Cascading Water. This is an image by Mike Gantz. You can download this image and the PDF notes and follow along with me. But before you do that, sit back, relax, and let's get started. Well, it's another TK Friday, and here we are again. This image comes from Mike Gantz. Thank you, Mike, for submitting this image. If you have an image you'd like me to edit, just uh, click on my contact link. Find it in the description below, and we can work out the details. I'd really love if some more folks would submit some more images. I already have a bunch of them, but the more the merrier, as they say. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can click on my affiliate link found in the description below this video. Just click on that link. It'll take you to the TK web store where you can purchase the TK8 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. And if you use my promo code DK15, you'll save 15% off your entire purchase. And when you do that, you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And for that, I truly thank you. This edit started out in Lightroom. I used a linear profile on it. This was shot with a Canon 5D Mark II, ISO 50 80 millimeter f22. A 2.5 second exposure gives you that nice uh, motion effect in the water. It looks like the water is actually flowing, and I think that looks really cool. I did do a little white balance adjustment on it, and as well as tone, I just basically clicked on auto and then I tweaked it from there. I basically want a pretty flat image going in here. Lightroom gave me some vibrance and saturation, which I pulled back because I know I'm going to get a lot more saturation out of this image once I get it into Photoshop and once I get the TK8 plugin for Photoshop working on it. So I don't want to go in with too much saturation. Now, as far as lens corrections, I checked on remove chromatic aberrations as well as enable profile corrections. And as far as detail, I'm not using any luminance noise reduction because the image was shot at ISO 50. And as far as color, I'm using the default setting for color noise reduction. And as far as sharpening, I'm just using Lightroom's default setting of 40 for sharpening. And I have some masking on there too, so I don't get any halos around the edges. Now, as far as output sharpening after the edit would be finished, I would use something like uh, Topaz Sharpen AI or Topaz Photo AI to do the output sharpening, or if I was going to put it onto social media, I would use like the TK8 plugin for Photoshop's web sharpening. Oh, and I almost forgot, I did do a crop on this image. You can see the crop right here. I kept it in the aspect ratio of the Canon 5D Mark II. So I did do a crop in this image. And now at this point, I would just right click, go to edit in and edit in Photoshop 2023. I've already done that. And so I will see you right here in Photoshop as soon as I do a little swish across my screen here. And here we are in Photoshop, ready to start with the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. But first, the first thing I want to do is, if you'll notice this rock down here, I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep it. I decided to remove it as well as this rock here. And there's a little area up in here I want to remove. And I'll show you how I would remove that. I'm going to do it right on the background layer because the removal tools in Photoshop are so good. A lot of times I just do it right on the background layer. I'm just going to use the lasso tool. So I'm going to type L for the lasso tool. And I left these rocks in for you. You can take them out or leave them in, whichever you prefer. So I'm just going to go around here. There's a little bit of, I don't know, disturbance in the water that I want to make sure I get. And I'm going to hold my shift key down. I'm going to see if I can do both of these at once and lasso around this rock. And let's lasso around this little area right up in here. If you right click on the canvas, you could come here and click on delete and fill selection. And it'll just fill those in real quickly, just like that, like magic. Oh, and by the way, that delete and fill selection is a new addition to Photoshop. It came a couple updates ago. My first step is always a balance and contrast adjustment. And to do that, I come up and click on the luminosity mask button, go to midtones three, just to protect my shadows and highlights from clipping. I'll put it to a color grading tool. And now I just adjust the shadows, midtones and highlights. I think I'll start with the shadows. I'll click on the shadow block and I'm just gonna drag this to the left to maybe somewhere right around here just to enrich those shadows a little bit. Next, I'll go to Midtones. I'll click on this gray block and just open up the Midtones just a little bit, not much, right around there. And now I'm gonna click on the highlight block and just open up the highlights to somewhere right around here. I think it looks good. 
And now I'm going to go back to midtones and I want to warm up the midtones. And I think maybe right about here looks pretty good. And now I'm going to go to the shadows and just move into the blue just a little wee bit. Not much, maybe right about here. Well, maybe that's too much. Maybe right there. And maybe I'll just darken up the shadows a little bit more. I don't know, maybe right there. So here is the before and here's the after. And already it's off to a good start and I really like the warmth that's coming into this image. The next thing I want to do is work on the highlights of this cascading water. And this is my favorite part of the image. And so let's bring out some of the highlights. So let's X out of the color grading tool. Nothing changes here. I'm going to click on the luminosity mask button and find a lights luminosity mask that will work. We defaulted a lights one. Let's try a lights two. Let's try a lights three. See, that's isolating too much. The light areas are the areas that I want, so I'm not getting enough here, so I'm going to go back to a lights two. And always try these different channels. You'll never know what you're going to get. You might get a nice selection if you do this. I call it selection. We're making a mask, but ultimately we're making a selection here. But I tried different ones out and I found out that blue gave me the most separation here. And it really, you know, hones in on the light areas of the water. And now I'm going to refine that mask with a levels adjustment. This is the way I like to do it. So click on this button right here. I'm going to pull my highlights over to right about here. I'm going to tighten this up by dragging the shadow slider to the right and now I'll lighten it up with the midtones a little bit more I don't know somewhere right around here I'm just trying to get these as light as I can but I want to keep this separation in here I might take this highlight slider and drag it over a little bit more to the left okay so right there I think is good now we just need to output this mask so what I'm going to do is use a dodge tool so the dodge tool has two sides the left side's a 50% gray layer the right side's a pixel layer I won't get into all that right now but there are reasons sometimes why you want to use one over the other. And I'm going to use the left side, which is the 50% gray layer. So I'm going to click on this. And you'll notice I have a selection by the selection indicator. So I'll be painting through a selection on a 50% gray layer. I'll be using the overlay blend mode and a white brush. Now I want to use an opacity of 20%. And sometimes you have to experiment. Sometimes it'll be 10, it'll be 20, it might be 30, it could be 50, but you got to experiment. But I found that 20 worked out really well for me. I'm using a soft 0% hardness brush. And I'm going to make my brush a little on the smaller side. And now it's just a matter of painting over these areas. And that mask is really helping. I went ahead and sped this up because this takes a little bit of time. Now I lift my brush and if I lift my my brush and if I paint again it's going to build up the effect so some areas I may let it go stronger other areas not quite as much but I'm just looking for these highlighted areas and this will really make this water sing and it really adds a really nice effect so you're just looking for those areas now you can use your gray brush to kind of like blend in if you screw up and you can always go back a step if you mess up as well so just paint away and look for all these areas and before long, you'll be done. But this is the fun and the joy of editing. All right, I think that's good enough for now. But take your time and get it right. But for me, dodging and burning is what I call the joy of editing. Because there you get to really be an artist and bring things out the way you want. I'll be doing some really cool burning here in a little bit. But let's check it out. Here's the before. And now here is the after. But check it out. You see the way that water just really pops out. I love it. Hey, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You're really supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly when you do that because that lets other people get to see my videos. YouTube has the algorithm that they work with. And when you like, share, and subscribe, it really helps promote my videos. So please do that. I really appreciate it. And leave comments and questions. I want to hear from you. The next thing I want to do is darken up the shadows on the entire image. Basically burn the shadows. And to do that, we're going to use a luminosity mask. It's going to be a darks mask. So this is darks one. Here's darks two. And I think darks two is going to work. But I'm going to try different, uh, you know, channels here. And I did that the other day and I found out that yellow worked out about the best for me. And now I'm going to go ahead and click on the levels adjustment and just tweak it up a bit. I'll pull my shadow slider in just to tighten it up, just somewhere right around there. I'm going to pull my highlights over to right about here. And I think I'll pull the midtones to the left just to lighten things up a little bit to I think right there. And all the light areas will be targeted, which will be the dark areas. Now I just need to output it. I'm going to output it to a burn tool. I'm going to use the left side of the burn tool, 50% gray layer, painting through a selection with a black brush at 
I'm going to go to 20% opacity. I'm going to type my two key. And now we can vary our brush size. I'll make my brush a little bigger and just paint this area down in here. I'll get this started here and then I'll finish it up and show you the results at the end. But I'm just looking for dark areas over the entire image just to make those little dark areas pop out. And this adds some like texture and so on in the image when you do this. And it really looks good. But I'll even get up in these trees a little bit up in here in the dark shadow areas of the trees and up in here. In another step of this edit, I'll do some freehand burning, which is a lot of fun. When I burn through a selection like I'm doing now, I like to call this burning on training wheels. But there is a place for freehand burning and dodging. And that's a true art form. I went ahead and finished up all the burning. Now let me show you. This is the before and this is the after. Took me a little bit of time, probably about five or seven minutes, somewhere around there. But again, the before and the after. But I think you could agree that it really helps start to sculpt this image and bring out a lot of nice detail and so on. The next thing I noticed, this area right under this boulder or rock, whatever you want to call it, is a little bit light. And I think a zone mask will target that. I want to darken this area up a little bit. So I'm going to click on the zone mask tool button and now a color picker comes up and I'm going to pick like right around here this tone right in here and click OK and now we have a mask and I basically now want to tighten up that selection I'm going to pull this slider in to the left like that see how we get nice isolation here and I'll just lighten it up just a little wee bit not much maybe right about there I don't want to lose any texture and now I'll simply output that to a burn tool using a 50% gray layer so I'll click on the left side I'll be painting through a selection. I'm still going to use 20% and I'll make my brush a little bit larger here and I'll kind of like start to paint across here. I want it darker here and now I'm going to make my brush larger. Every time I lift my brush, it gets a little bit darker when I paint again. So I want to kind of just kind of, you know, fade this out here or graduate it. You might say would be a better word, but something like that I think should do it. Now, here is the before, and here's the after. So it darkens it up, and, and if it's too strong, you can pull back on the opacity, okay? I'm going to leave it at 100%, and I forgot to tell you on this burn layer, I ended up pulling the opacity back to 84% because I felt I was a little bit strong-handed. So don't forget about your opacity. That helps. I'm going to click on this burn layer, so I'm at the top of the layer stack. You'll notice I still have a selection, and for my next step, I don't want that selection. I'll click this button on the combo panel. You'll find it here on the CX panel. So I'm going to click right here and deselect because I noticed a slight bit of a blue color cast in the water. It's really hard to pick up. It's very minimal, but I want to get rid of it. So to do that, I'm just using a hue saturation adjustment layer. So I'm going to click this button, click on the target tool and click right here. There's a little bit of blue there and I'm just going to pull back and you can see that it chose blues. So I'm just going to take this uh, saturation and pull it back just to make sure I don't have any blue color cast in that water. I thought I was going to need to use a color mask, but there's not much blue anywhere else, but only reflected in that water in the light areas. So that gets rid of it. I don't really need a mask. Sometimes you do, though. In fact, more often than not, you do. Now I'm noticing, see these lighter areas up in the rocks? I feel they're a little bit too light. So what I'm going to do, normally I'll use a curves adjustment layer in the multiply blend mode. I'll start with a black mask. But in this case, I think I want to do some color grading. This is an experiment I tried and it worked. So what I'm going to do is grab a color grading tool. So click on this button right here. Gives you a color grading tool. Now you must click the plus to add it. There it is right there. I'm going to put a black mask on it first. So I'm going to click this button. And now I'm going to change it to the multiply blend mode. It doesn't go dark because this mask is hiding the darkness. And now I need to make a luminosity mask to target that area. Or rather a zone mask. I think a zone mask is going to target this better. So what I'll do is I'll get rid of this color grading tool by clicking on the X. The color grading tool is still there. And I haven't made an adjustment on it yet, by the way. It is in the multiply blend mode. Now I'm going to click on the zone mask. And I'm thinking about maybe doing a workshop on different masks like 
when should you use a zone mask, when should you use a luminosity mask or a color mask. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, let me know in the comments section below because I'm planning on doing one and I'd like to know if you'd be interested in it before I go ahead and make something like that. So this light area right in here, I'm going to click here to pick that zone and click OK. And that mask looks really nice the way it's isolating everything, just the light areas I want to paint over in these light rocks up here. I'm not even going to do any refining because it looks good. So now I'll output this to a black mask, white brush, painting through a selection. So click this button right here to get that. And now we can paint. I'm going to use 20% opacity. And all I want to do is paint across these areas like this. All these lighter areas up in here just to get rid of them. Not get rid of them, but just tone them down a little bit because they're drawing our eye. In areas that are drawing your eye, well, if you don't want people to really be interested in that area so much, like I want them to be more interested in the water here. So I'm going to go ahead and tone these lighter areas down a little bit just by painting across here, just like that. And I think that's going to be okay. But now I'm going to add a little bit of color grading. I noticed that I did not get this boulder here or up in here. So I wanted to add that too. So I paused the video and I just painted those in as well. Here is the before and here is the after. So all those light areas are toned down because my eye was being drawn to this boulder too. I did, did the same thing, just painted over it. And now for the color grading, but where is my color grading tool? Well, here's what you need to do. Click on the color grading tool and then just make the midtone block active by clicking on midtones and you see the block comes right there to the center. And I want to drag it to right about here. See how it just warms up all these boulders and rocks in here, which looks really nice. Now, here is the before and here is after, but that just adds a little bit of color grading to them and they need it. And now I'm looking at this water and I feel like I want this a little bit lighter. So I'm going to do something here and that is come back to this layer right here where I'll shut it off. So this is where I lightened up the water. And what I'll do is make a duplicate. So if I click on this button on the combo button, panel or this button on the CX panel, it'll copy that layer and see how that gets lighter. And now what I'll do is just take the opacity back to right around, I think, 84%. So here is the before and here's after. So it just brings a little bit more life to that water. And to me, this image is all about that water. And now let's go back to the top of the layer stack and make this layer active. And now we'll build from here. Just a few more steps and we'll be done. But I like to approach editing like building a house, starting out on the foundation and working up. And to me, that first layer, balance and contrast, is like my foundation. And then I build upon that foundation. And before you know it, you're done. But that's the approach that I like to take. And now the part I was waiting for is the freehand burning. Now, right now, you'll notice I have a selection. I don't want that. So I'm going to deselect by clicking this button on the combo panel. My selection goes away because now it's all freehand. So I'm going to click on the left side of the burn tool to give me that 50% gray layer. Here it is on the combo panel, and you'll find it right here on the CX panel. So click on that. 50% gray layer, soft light, blend mode, black paint. Now, I'm going to start... And I'm going to use, again, 20% opacity, I think is going to be good. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller here. And it's just a matter of painting over areas. Now, every time I lift my brush and paint again, it will make it darker. Now, remember, there's no training wheels here. You're just freehanding it here. I'm going to get this started here just to show you. I'm going to go over the entire image. And then... I'll pause the video and then I'll get back to you and show you the final results. But I'll even come up here in some of these shadow areas and darken them down a little bit. Just bringing out some depth and dimensions. Okay, so on these rocks up in here. And again, this is your artistic license. This is where you can really make this image your own. Okay, and we're all going to be a little different. But don't be discouraged. This takes a little bit of practice to start doing this but it's really not that hard you're just looking for dark areas i'm going to go ahead and pause now and i'll get right back with you and now through the magic of editing i am back now here's before my free hand burning and here is after again the before and the after but you see all the nice uh sculpting this does to the image here 
Now, what you can do is, like right here, I went a little bit over here. So what you can do is switch to a gray brush. I'm still at 20% opacity, and I can like kind of erase that off. You can blend out areas if you messed up. So don't forget about that gray brush. That's why I really like to use that 50% uh, gray layer. The gray brush comes in really handy. If you use that gray brush and you think it's a really good tool to have, let me know in the comments section below. I'm going to grab my lasso tool by typing L because my next step is to do a freehand vignette. And basically what I want to do is highlight this area in here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of lasso around this area keeping that water all in there and just coming around like so, something like that. And then on my CX panel, what I like to do is keep it always open. If you have a lot of real estate on your computer, it's a good thing to do. If you don't, I understand you can't do it. But I'm going to click on TK Actions. And whenever I use an action, this will stay open because I set mine up to do that. And I explain that in my hidden features video. So I'm going to click on freehand vignette. And when you do Gaussian blur, the Gaussian blur dialog comes up and just click OK. I find the radius it picks is always right. So click OK. There it is. So here is the before and here is the after. But you see how it just brings this area in. Now, I think it's too strong. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use blend diff to protect my darkest shadows. I'll do that first. So I'm going to double click right here. That'll open up the layer style dialog and what I'll do is I'm going to pull this triangle over to right about here to protect my darkest shadows and hold your option or alt key down and click on the right side of the triangle and we're going to split this and you know that'll just feather that out but it's going to protect the dark shadows and I'm going to click OK and now I'm going to take the opacity and I'm going to take it the whole way off and what I like to do is just build it up slowly just to where it looks kind of natural and right and I think think maybe right at 40 so here is the before and here is after but you see how it really lets our eyes come into the waterfall or the cascading water now one thing I always like to try is soft pop so let me click on the soft pop action and let it run hey that looks really strong right but what we're going to do is take this opacity off and I'll just build it up slowly and I'll stop where I think it looks good and I think right at 50 Here's the before and here's the after. It pops the color a little bit. It pops out the details. It's a really cool action. Again, here is the before and here is the after. And I think I like it. And now the next thing I'm noticing is these trees seem a little too dark up in here. So I want to lighten those up. So I'm thinking a color mask will work for that. But before I do that, let's X out of the color grading tool. I'm going to grab a curves adjustment layer. So click this button right here. I'm going to put a black mask on it and I'm going to change it to the screen blend mode to lighten. I always like to use that to lighten and the multiply to darken. And now I can click on this color mask button to generate a color mask. And let's click on an area in here that represents these colors right here and click OK. And that makes a pretty good selection. I'm going to take this top slider and see if I can tighten it up. I'm going to drag it to the right to maybe right about there. See how I'm getting really nice isolation here. And now let's take this brightness slider and drag it over to the right and eh, maybe right about there. I don't want them getting real light and I think this is going to be good. I don't think I need to further refine it with a levels adjustment. I'm going to output this to a black mask painting with a white brush through a selection. I'm going to change my opacity to 50%, but you might have to experiment to get the right number. But I found 50% work good, so I'm typing my 5 key. And all I'm going to do is with a nice big brush, just kind of lighten up these trees. And these guys over in here. And I'll make my brush smaller. Anything green, it's going to target like this little bush right here, whatever you want to call this, down in here. Here's a bush over in here. We're going to lighten it up. Now, remember, I can lift the brush and paint again to make it even lighter. Here's a little green thing over in here and here. And, you know, I might come back up in here and just lighten a little bit. Maybe hit a couple of these areas just to, you know, for artistic purposes. Let's get some of this stuff up in here as well. And maybe up in here. And let's take a look. Here is the before. And here is the after. 
just a nice little lightening up of those trees. Now my eye is still being pulled up into this area, so I need to darken it a little bit more. To do that, I'm going to use a Curves Adjustment Layer. Now I have a selection. i got to get rid of it. So click this button to deselect. Grab a Curves Adjustment Layer. I'm going to put a black mask on it and put it in the Multiply Blend Mode, clicking this button right here. I think I'll use a Zone Mask, so I'll click this button here. Just click on a Light Tone to find that zone. Click OK. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up a bit like that. Let's give it a little bit more lightening. We don't want to lose any texture. I think that's good. I'll put it to a black mask, painting with a white brush through a selection. Change my brush to 20% opacity and just on these lighter areas, I just want to darken them up just like this, just to keep our eye off of here. Down in here as well. Just a little further darkening here. I think will really help this out. And now our eyes are going more here. So here is the before and here is the after. And I think that helps. Now on my notes, I don't have this, but I ended up adding one more vignette. And so I'm just going to click the basic vignette action right here. Click OK for the Gaussian blur. I'll use some blend if so I'm going to double click right here. And again, I'm going to drag this shadow triangle over to right about here. Hold the Option or Alt key down and click on the right side and split that triangle and just protect those darker shadows. Click OK. Now it's way too strong, so I'm going to take the opacity the whole way off and I'll just build it up slowly. I don't want much here. Maybe around 17, 18%. Here's the before and here's the after. I don't want you to know it's really there, but I just want to just keep you all right into here. So there you go. Now here's where we started. Here's the start of the image. I'm using my before after action. Here's the before and here is the after. And I'm not saying it's a totally done edit, but you could do some more stuff on it. But for now, I think it's, it's pretty well done. Well, there it is, everyone. And yet another TK Friday comes to a close. I hope you enjoyed this full edit today. Thank you, Mike, for the use of your image. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.